right, hello everyone, and welcome to the seventh session of Star Trek Dark Royal. For those who don't know, Dark Royal is a tabletop role-playing game using the Star Trek Adventures rule set. It is set aboard an alien vessel that is not part of Starfleet and thus plays by different rules. We're in the same sort of canon as McCall's Nighthawk and Cerberus games, and you can check those out and catch the VODs for Dark Royal on my YouTube. Uh, one little quick bit of shilling before I run the intro. Uh, I appreciate any and all forms of support, but uh, with everything going on in the world, uh, please make sure to take care of yourself and uh, stay healthy. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and run the intro. <laughs> And welcome back. So normally I would have a player take the opening log here, but I thought I would do one to catch us up to speed after the crossover episode with Server Station. So it's been several weeks since the Dark Royal crew has welcomed its newest guest, a Vorta by the name of Yelgren. They've kept out of the way of the crew, uh, really only attending briefings and meals, which is a good thing considering pretty much that the crew is still getting used to the Dark Royals retrofit. Though most of the interiors have remained the same, there have been subtle changes in addition to reflect the, shall we say, drastic exterior changes. Uh, most noticeable among them is on the bridge, where an old Terran-style steering wheel stands opposite a Grand Captain's chair. It's meant to be a manual override in case normal navigation fails, Though as a certain first officer has found out, it isn't very intuitive. Thus, we join our players as they're discussing things on the bridge. So everyone is there. Everyone that should be on the bridge is there. Uh, the only one who is not is uh, Yelgren. But as I said, unless you specifically request his presence, uh, Yelgren has the smarts to stay out of the way. Captain, I've tried to connect this steering wheel up as best as I can, but it's not in intuitive. It's not reflexive. It's it spins. Yes, it spins. And when it spins, we spin. Well, it's an interesting. Novelty. Apparently, the um, the Nanad colonies found a bunch of nice references within the what was that ship called again? The Ophion. Yes, it uh, took some inspiration from uh, what they called pirating, or the human pirates. Mm -hmm. So we have a nice, fun look to the interior now, and the exterior is quite imposing. Mm -hmm. That it is. There's still some of my meat I can't find from that one room that was ejected into space. It's somewhere on the hall, but we can't find it. Right. Koros, anything for us? Anything in the way? In the way, sir? Yeah, just something, so we can not talk about rotten meat. Some of my supplies have been moved, but I think I've managed to find all of them. I, I'm assuming you mean scanning the area, sir. Yes. All right. 
Captain, I wish to assure you that the bear traps and explosives are still beneath my seat. Mm. That excellent news. <laughs> and Kuros, to save us from ourselves, you're picking up a radio signal. Is there any way for me to get a little bit, get more details on that? Like there is indeed. You can roll me a insight science at a difficulty of one. Would sensors or computers work? Uh, both would apply. Yeah. Okay. One success. That's all you need. So what you're able to tell is that this is a as I said, an old style radio signal, and it is coming from a system, uh, an uncharted system, approximately about a day away at warp seven. Uh, you could get there, of course, quicker at warp nine, but uh, where this is going is this radio signal uh, does appear to have some video signal embedded within it. So you could conceivably play it on the view screen if you so wished. Uh, Captain, may I commandeer the view screen for a moment? Certainly, go ahead. Uh, she'll go ahead and display it just to see okay. what exactly is going on. So, what appears on the screen is uh, static for the most part, and you're able to make out some shapes. Uh, they seem to be humanoid in nature, um, probably with a backdrop of uh, some sort of a, a corridor or a space station but uh what you're also seeing is that uh the station is orbiting a planet so like there's a window in the background um but again it's it's very hard to make any concrete details out and the audio isn't much better the audio uh sort of sounds like uh high piercing screeches which are intermixed with intermittent breaths and the uh, the universal translator is not picking it up. Well, that's fortunate. Ships haunted. <laughs> <laughs> Do we at least see shapes? Yeah, I mean, you see a humanoid shape speaking to the camera, okay. um, but you're not really able to make out any concrete details. So this is about. Uh... Stay away at warp seven, sir. I can't really pick up what they might be, and uh, the translator isn't picking up their language. Is, do you want to do anything? Do you want to go visit? <laughs> I don't understand. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, either they're asking for help or asking if something's out there. And I think it's only befitting that the first thing they see is a giant warship just to show up. And he gives a smile at that. He's like, set a course, but warp six. I want you to work on that transmission and get a linguistic set up so we understand them. What exactly does the other ship look like? Does it look as imposing as the Dark World? Um, more imposing. More? Oh, no. Oh, that sounds like a target to ram now. <laughs> there can only be one. <laughs> no, I'm, I mostly joke. Uh, it looks like uh, if you would imagine the International Space Station, maybe about three, three or four times the size of the ISS. Um, so it's very basic. Okay. We can probably meet them on that ship. It won't be as threatening to them, probably. Hmm. Well, let's set a course. Warp 6, though. And uh, he have speaks up. Uh, just in course, no, Captain. And yeah, Kuros, uh, you can attempt either an insight or a reason plus science, and the ship will assist you with a computer's plus science. This will be a difficulty of one. What am I attempting to do? Uh, cleaning up the uh, transmission signal for the universal translator. Got it. Will computers work for that? Computers will definitely work for this. Look at that. Three successes. Yes. Yep. Wow, you guys yeah. are rolling real well. That's uh, four momentum for you. So, Kuros, it's sort of a, a 
interesting revelation. The language appears to be from an old, previously thought extinct species of Zindi, specifically the Zindi avians. Sir, after working on the translator, it seems like uh, they could potentially be Zindi avians. Uh, they were thought to be extinct, and this is probably the first sighting in a long time. Zindi. They're the, uh... oh, right. They're the ones that attacked Earth, I believe. Yes, sir. Hmm. Huh. Well then, let's set a course and get me all the information you can on the Zindi. Avians, reptilians, everything. I'll uh, go over it and see if there's anything that can be of value to help with the uh, first contact. Yes, sir. Alright. So, uh... Just to keep things moving, what I would say is that you could look up on Memory Alpha everything you need to know about the Zindi, but long story short, they are uh, a multi, I don't want to say species, because basically the Zindi are broken up into Zimbi Arboreal, Zimbi Aquatic, etc., etc., and they all have different, shall we say, ship types, cultures, etc., um, the Zindi avians were thought extinct during the whole civil war uh, that happened on the Zindi planet. Um, but apparently you've got uh, some form of Zindi avian out this way. Um, but we're going to skip ahead unless anyone wants to do anything in the interim while you're traveling. Uh, I'm just going to go around and inspect the ship. Um just seeing different parts of it and how it's reacting, how the crew's reacted to the changes, especially for the uh, the exterior. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, I want to visit engineering, if that's changed drastically. Um, it sort of has. Uh, I guess we can briefly go to the engineering map. Uh, instead of the two Klingon-style command cores, or command cores, reactor cores, um, what you're seeing is now one large one um, that takes up most of the space, and instead of the yellows and reds, it's now glowing uh, whites and blues. But it's a very odd blue. It's almost like a uh, a black light blue. Mm. Uh, we still had um. So if I remember correctly, I negotiated to have like some of them brought aboard to also go back to the Carnet homeworld, or at least the solar system to set up on another demon class planet. Um, are they still aboard the ship or did they get like dispatched when we were at Cerberus? The nanites, I'm assuming you mean? Yeah. Um, they are still around um, pretty much until you tell me, hey, we're offloading them. Okay. But I would okay. say that there was a separate ship sent from the planet you found them on back to the Cornet homeworld already. Okay, excellent. And, of course, we have our own nanites that are still hovering around the ship. Yep. Okay. Uh, is Zazadar there, or is he not? If Zazadar wants to be there, he can be there. Oh, I will be there. Trying to catch a nanite. <laughs> Jeef, how do you find a new warp core? Uh, I find it right there, sir. And does it function adequately for you? Uh, more so. It's better than before. If you're able to, could you draft up schematics and designs of this so we could transmit back to the Cornets? Aye, sir, we can do that. Go through the ship, get a detailed uh, schematic setup of everything. If we could make more ships like this, uh, the Imperium would be quite happy, especially with the design. Now, if I remember, the original Dark Royal was a antiquated Hornet design? Somewhat. 
So this refit would bring it in advance of the the top of the line Cornet ships. Possibly. The Carnets are working on a new design with from uh, some plans that were shared with them. The former chief of engineer that was here is actually leading one of those projects. So oh. I'm, I'm sure they'd be happy with any uh, further aid or maybe some ideas they could draw from inspiration. Well, I'm trying to teach these nanites that I have in engineering how to assist more with interior damage repair quicker than we have before. How have you been trying to communicate with them? Not very well. I see. And Thomas is going to look around the dike. Do I see any clusters floating around? Um, I would say that there's maybe a cluster here and there. I'll walk over to one and just extend my hand out. Uh, the nanite cloud sort of just uh, envelops your hand, but uh, doesn't really do much of anything. It just sort of buzzes there. Hmm. Uh, if you are present, I would like to open a dialogue. Shall we use the ship's computers for communications, or do you have something else in mind? And uh, what you get is a console next to Zazadar lights up, and it displays the words, this will suffice. Oh, yes. Yes, it will. There you go, Thank Zazadar. You, Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Very well. I'll go back to the bridge. We have some time before we hit the signal. I would like to potentially have a gathering before we get there. Potentially a meeting. Something more casual, though. How casual are we talking? Uh, just like a, you know, free to speak freely type meeting. Ah. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to the war room. Because, you know, war room. <laughs> and yeah, uh, all of you are there as I throw tokens on. But yeah, as the captain has said, this is sort of your moment. If you've got something on your mind, go ahead and speak it. And I would say that Yelgren is there, but he's like hanging off in the corner. Okay. Captain and Koras, I have a question about uh, the creatures we will be encountering. Suppose. Are they not documented extinct? That's what the records I ran through said, yes. But they may have gotten off world. And the probability of that, what would you say? Slim. This could also be a derelict that's just transmitting a code over and over. Something of a relic. I agree with the captain. It's a very low possibility that it that they wouldn't have been found by now. But stranger things have happened. Hmm. I will be testing to see if my if our weaponry can harm creatures with no substance. Then. By that, do you mean uh, ghosts? I'd rather not say that word. You d you do notice that my that Kragget's, uh usual demeanor is a little bit less calm when you mention ghosts. So my uh, so I I'm not uh, particularly brushed up on the cornet culture, but are you superstitious? And Dobbins is just going to look at at Craig and like, well, answer her. Not particularly. Then why are you creating uh, something to deal with ghosts? 
all possibilities must be accounted for. <laughs> she shrugs her shoulders. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, that's good initiative. I hope this is being done on your off time, though. Yes. Though a lack of samples is making it quite difficult. Well, you should maybe call someone about that. I, I, I give did. a side look at Zazadar. I give a side look back. <laughs> <laughs> this... Ho hopefully mutual understanding there. I raise an eyebrow. Eyebrow raise as well. Zazadar, would you be interested in making a new weapon? Always. Good. Interested, yes. In our off time, we shall confer our ideas. Also, I turn around and look at Yelgrun. Anyone, anyone know exactly why he is here? He is the diplomatic attaché of the Dominion. He is here to... What is that word you used? He just looks to Yelgrun. And he sighs deeply and says, I am here at the command of Founder Odo to provide the Dominion insight as to your situation and any assistance that you might need. All because I'm a, a what founder, exactly? yes. Excellent. You didn't say the other word. Did has he gotten any sleepers recently? He looks tired. No, he's just a cheerful individual. He I see. Seem that cheerful. Oh, he's oh no! I bustling. assure you, I am overjoyed. This is just the default tone of my voice, and you don't need to roll insight. To know that that is the heaviest sarcasm in the history of sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> the the very polite uh, Vorta named Wei Yun gave me a, a nice little uh, dossier on you, Yelgrun, and uh, of your talents. Singing? And he just looks at him and blinks a couple of times, like... That's one of them, is it not? Do you want me to sing a patter song? Well, I'm just curious if that's actually true. Because that's interesting for Vorta. All I knew about them was that, well, you were made to be... How shall I say this? Efficient. He uh, breaks into song. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I will spare you the trouble. But uh, he sings, uh, he is the very model of a modern Major Vorda. So if you've ever, uh, what is that, Gulliver's Tales? If not, look it up. Uh, it's a great patter song. It's also where the scientist Salarian comes from in Mass Effect. Dominus is just going to grin. I think we'll get along fine, despite my initial hesitations. I, I do have some questions for you later, but that'll be another time. As for the rest of you, this meeting is more relaxed and not as formal. So feel free to ask questions even outside of the current mission we're on. I want to establish more of a rapport with my senior crew. I plan on going ahead and notifying Starfleet of the current situation status because of the just knowing that, or having known that uh, the avian Zindi were extinct and now coming across this transmission, it's big news for them at least to know about. So I went ahead and did that, just keeping you updated on Starfleet communications. Very good. Save the trouble of asking you to send a message to them, which I was planning on doing later. By all Anyone means, <laughs> if you have any more info, I'll, t I'll tell them. Excellent. Uh, and he's just going to tilt his head looking at her neck. Is she wearing all the new pip? Because well, that makes her a lieutenant commander now, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. 
she, she probably really struggled putting that last one on, but she, she put it. And how are you finding your new duties and responsibilities? Because right now, I believe we just assigned you as our science. But I think having you become also the responsible for computer maintenance and deflector control. How does that sound for you? It, it sounds great. Deflector control might be a bit new for me, but I'm pretty sure I can get the handle hang of it soon. Well, I know that it makes particles or energy beams or other things, so I figured that'd be fun for you and also give you something new to tinker with. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, gotta take a bunch of notes. I might need to ask Sazadar a few questions, but should be fun. Well, I encourage questions to be asked. A nice, what is it here, human motto. It is better to look like a fool for five minutes than a fool for the rest of your life. Ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I do have a question about when we ran into, had that unfortunate run-in with, uh, I forgot the species, but uh, the potential use or creation of, what was it, a... Um, it was almost an immediate transporter, kind of like going through a wormhole. Because uh, after Kaya left, I kind of fell off of that project. Should we pick it back up? Most definitely. I think it'll be a useful and tactical application to immediately transmit a quantum or photon or nuclear warhead inside of an enemy vessel. Deal with oh. them. He just starts smiling. He's like, I am joking, but it would be useful for a lot of things, of course. Did not think about <laughs> the use for uh, weapons, but uh, you bring up a good point, sir. Well, it would be something the Borg won't be able to counter that easily. Yeah, that. I agree, sir. Or, you know, any other Justicar Paladin Crusaders come to bother me. Or the station I happen to be on, he just looks at Yelgrun. And Yelgrun actually sort of shakes his head and says, If you so wish, Founder, I could potentially give the Dominion Shield technology and transporters to Lieutenant Commander Karas. I think shields are for the weak. Hull plating and ramming speed are best. As you oh. wish, Founder. Being able to understand the shields will probably help with the deflectors. Oh, very well. And it's interesting that you would be so willing to give up that information. You are a Founder. It is technically your birthright to command whatever the task may be birthright okay well I don't want to put the Dominion in such a situation where they feel that they are incapable of defending themselves so when the time comes we will ask for your help then he just sort of nods anyone else have questions statements they wish to sh say I have one, sir. Yes. And uh, he have smiles at Krag uh, Krageth. I was thinking perhaps we could make Haunted House. I understand Halloween is a tradition on human, uh, in human culture. I was thinking that perhaps we set up Haunted House and get Krageth here. <laughs> I could also help with that. And as he says that, he turns into a fog. And he slowly rises up like a weird apparition and re slowly reverts back. Quite Krageth makes, Krageth makes no uh, visual change because he knows you're not a ghost <laughs> you know it reminds me of, of uh, some old fun tales I was told you know, a few years ago some uh, junior officers they would sit by what they would call a campfire and share tales of uh, horror 
something about a a, uh, a sigh. Something, something sigh. I can't quite recall. But if I ever come across those uh, officers again, I'll make sure to ask them for more detail. I think that uh, we'll keep Kragath happy. Horror stories. Yes. Well, so most you... cultures oh, call them horror. <laughs> most cultures call them horror stories. I call them a nice light read. <laughs> so I take it you don't uh, flinch at the thought of uh, undead creatures. Nah, well, for me, no, not really, because I can literally turn into a puddle. What about Kraga? He she makes a puddle. <laughs> And I start moving kind of around the table far away from Kragas. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well then, it sounds like everyone's had their fun. Dismissed. Alright. Does anyone else have a scene they'd like to get out of the way before we get to the plot? Master at Arms, you said about making a weapon? Oh, did we lose Kragath? Uh, you did lose me for a second. You said something about making a weapon. Yes, yes. We will discuss that later. After I've gone over the appropriate records. All right. All right. In that case, we will cut ahead a few hours to back on the bridge where you are arriving at your destination. Now, uh, appearing on the view screen is what looks like a uh, fairly standard red giant system with uh, three planets. And the signal is coming from the second planet. And as the ship gets closer, the view screen sort of zooms in. And what you're seeing is that the planet... Uh, there's two distinct land masses. Uh, there's a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere. And sort of like the Suez and Panama canals, there's this sort of thin strait of water that uh, separates the two hemispheres, uh, visible from space, so it's quite large. Uh, but on either side of the continents are these massive oceans with a bunch of islands and islets. Uh, but what you're also seeing from high orbit is that there's quite a bit of volcanic activity that is sort of circling the world. Uh, big mountains spewing ash, lava, uh, things of that nature. And uh, Kuras, uh, since you have four momentum, I'm just going to give this to you free. Um, the signal is coming from a space station in low orbit, and that orbit is deteriorating. As in it's going to crash into the planet? Eventually, yes. Okay. Uh, Captain, uh, it seems like the signal that we have been following is coming from that space station there, and um, it's slowly making its way to the planet's surface. But by slowly, I mean it's currently hanging out in low, low orbit, but it's going to crash soon-ish. Very well. Have we detected any life forms on the station? I'll go ahead and do that, sir. All right. Uh, let's make this a reason science for you. Uh, Zazadar, I'd like you to assist, please. Uh, you're going to do a reason engineering. And the ship will assist you with a sensor's science. Um, oh, wow, Cross is rolling really hot tonight. Yes! Power distribution systems, work field dynamics. I'll give you power distribution systems. And as I was looking up that, it was engineering. Engineering reason, yeah. Wow, you guys are doing tremendously well. Let's see what the ship gets you. And the ship was... Sensor science. Sensor science. Okay, but hey, five successes is still nothing to shake a shake a leg at. That's uh, 
I believe that is three momentum, which means you have one floating. So between the two of you, you're able to detect that there's no life signs on the station. And the power that is present on the station is just barely enough to repeat and pulse the signal that you were detecting earlier, that, that radio signal. Um, and what I would say is that Zazadar, um, if you give me a momentum, I will tell you more about the structural integrity of the station. Um, we do have the floating momentum. Mm -hmm. And the science officer, doesn't she get a freebie? She does. So yeah. If Koros wants to spend her freebie on that. And then you still got a floating momentum after that, Koros. All right. So, uh, should we be asking about, like, um, I know we didn't catch any life signs, but anything along the lines of life support or, um, I guess, well. Well, first, uh, let's go with the um, the leading question of what the uh, LH was proposing. Oh, right. All right. Yes. So what you're, uh, what you're detecting, Karas, is that you're pretty sure the station can't take a tractor beam. It's simply too fragile in its current state. Uh, so if you were to tractor beam it, you'd probably rip it apart. Um, somewhere in the neighborhood of 6 to 12 hours from now, though, the station will burn up in the planet's atmosphere. Unless you do something. Uh, Captain, no, I'll, I'll go ahead and relay that information to him. Right. And you still have the freebie question or the momentum spin if you want, since we have a floating for another question. Mm -hmm. uh, is there, uh, I guess, since <laughs> I'm supposed to be tinkering with deflector shields, is there a way for us to get on that ship and, like, or I'm sorry, do def utilize our deflector shields on that station if we're close enough. Could, could you send it. nanites and, yeah. through the deflector shields ahead of us to maybe affect some repairs? I like that question. You want to go with that one? Yes. We'll okay. So the answer is potentially yes. Uh, the nanites could repair the station and bring it up to order. Uh, however, you would need to go over there and set up sort of a beacon. Um, now, this beacon is something that I'm imagining is sort of like a transporter pattern enhancer, but it essentially draws the nanites to a location and says, hey, repair this kind of a thing. Um, but the good news is you could just beam over to the station. You'd have to do uh, environmental suits, but you could potentially just beam over. Uh, Captain, should we also do a scan of the planet just to be sure? I think that's a good idea. Go ahead. All right. And since you're capped on momentum, I'm going to again give this to you for free. Uh, as far as you're detecting from the planet, there is no advanced life. Uh, you are detecting that there is some form of a, a structure or several structures, maybe some sort of a city uh, in the Northern Hemisphere. But you're also detecting that the planet is uh, covered in magnesite. And magnesite is a problem because, well, you can't beam through it. So you're not really able to get a sort of a look inside the city or any of the mountain ranges. It, it seems like there are a few cities, but I don't think we'll be able to beam through the magnesite, sir. All right, well, launch a low-orbit probe. Get as much data as you can. Yes, sir. How many of those things do we have? Uh, the probes, hand wave of number. I mean, probes are pretty ubiquitous. Just one. 
You can launch a couple. Launch a, how many ever you want. Okay. Launch them to your heart's content. We got a we have a replicator for them. <laughs> All right. I just like to imagine Cross pressing the button like three or four times, then maybe <laughs> going for a fifth, and then yeah. hesitating <laughs> and maybe going for the sixth. And then really <laughs> thinking about that seventh, oh. and then deciding to just just go with ten and be like, "All right, even number, we're good." Nice. The industrial replicators are going to be going on overtime now. <laughs> so we launched 10 probes? Yep. <laughs> Even numbers make her happy. <laughs> this could be like some kid on this planet, like, Mommy, Mommy, look at Shoot Star. And she's like, Dummy, it's daytime. <laughs> she's just going to be mad at her kid. <laughs> Uh, do the probes relay back any information? I mean, they are, but uh, nothing immediate that would be of interest. Alright. And we're just still heading on course toward the station. Are we, are we within the transporter range? You By now, you're within transporter range. Alright. And Chorus, what was the message? Uh, did you get that it's unscrambled? Did we? <laughs> you did. And the message was very short and sweet. It said that they are the Zindi. They are in orbit of a planet they are calling Doradis. D-O-R-A-D-I-S. And that they are seeking some form of assistance with a medical crisis. Hmm. Do one more scan of that station. Look for cryogenic pods or stasis chambers. Yes, sir. And Karas, I will give you the option. You can either roll for this or you can just give me one point of momentum. Y'all okay with that one point of momentum? Yeah. Sure. All right. So what you're detecting is that there, in fact, is a few cryopods on the lower levels of the station. Turns out that there are a few, but are, are they in use, though? Uh, no. Unfortunately, uh, the only power that's available uh, is currently being uh, relegated to sending out that uh, distress signal. Hmm. Very well. I think this will be a good away team for Koros and Kragas to go over. Same with you, Zazdar. Discerned. Hmm. Yeah, if you have the bridge. And of course, Captain. Gather all you need. I was thinking we could take a power generator and maybe a structural integrity field generator. Consider it done. Kragath, bring, bring a good weapon. Permission to bring out the big guns. Bring out the big gun, just one. Very well then, Captain. And will you be wearing a... Environmental suit, sir. After last time, I figured I would do something a little different, and he's just going to shift his form, mm -hmm. and he is going to look like a silicon-based life form, so metal plating all over. Okay, so like Silver Surfer. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, or Doctor Doom. <laughs> okay. I sense this may cause another, another catastrophe. I'm taking a threat for the pun. Oh! <laughs> just, just taps uh, next to a button on his chair. Like, that sets off your traps. <laughs> he just looks at him. Like, okay, let's go. All right. So uh, you basically get suited up. You grab the equipment you want to bring. And you beam over to the station and when you materialize, uh, it's actually a rather spacious sort of interior. Um, it's obviously built for a species that is flight capable, 
meaning that there's consoles all the way up the walls near the ceiling. Uh, if you want an approximate size, uh, the deck is about 30 meters high, so it's quite large. Uh, I think that actually dwarfs uh, the earlier estimate I gave of like the ISS. Um, needless to say, it's large. Um, what you're also noticing is that probably about a meter apart uh, every so often on the walls is some form of a perch or a column that uh, could very well be just, you know, ways that the Zindi avians sort of just uh, worked on their perches, if that makes any sense. Okay. But as you all beam in, I need everybody to roll me a control and a con, please, at a difficulty of two. Any focuses? Uh, if you have zero uh, zero gravity environments, uh, if you have uh, EVA, uh, all sorts of like spacewalking focuses would apply. Okay, so I see two for Karas, two for Kragith, one for Dominus, and two for Zazadar. All right, so Karas, Kragith, Zazadar. And this actually works out thematically. Um, you, the magnetized soles of your boots kick in almost immediately and sort of lock you to the deck plating. However, Dominus, you don't have that luxury. So when you beam in, you actually just begin floating up slowly in zero gravity. Nope. Great. Um, uh, I'm going to grab Dominus's leg and pull him back down. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to roll me a fitness and a security, please. All right. <laughs> you are able to grab him just fine. Captain, I would suggest keeping your feet on the ground. Uh, that's a very astute observation and advice. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Should we get that EVA suit, sir? No, I'll be fine. And what he's going to do is he's just going to... Basically, anytime he's stepping, he's basically making micro little tendrils to like grip onto the plating. Okay. Like, there we go. Mm. Well... We have a computer terminal here. Let's take a look at it. Koros, can you examine it? Yes, sir. All right. So, Koros, uh, it takes you maybe about 15 seconds to look at it, determine that uh, it is most definitely not powered, and that uh, this is more a Zazadar thing. <laughs> she's just gonna look around and be like I thought I could do it but I I think um, Lieutenant Commander uh, Zazadar would be a better person to ask sir Zazadar after you I bring the um, probable power generator mm -hmm. we'll hook that up and start making the connections okay that's going to be a control and in engineering, a difficulty of two. Uh, however, I am going to spend some threat here to make it a difficulty of three. Okay, I will use one of the momentum. And with that, I have cautious engineering. Mm -hmm. So that'll give me some good... All right, so you said control engineering? You got it. Um, power distribution systems, oh, yeah. diagnostics. Yeah, both would apply. Hey, three successes. Very nice. So, uh, yeah, with... Uh, your know-how, you are able to get the console to light up. And when the console comes to life, um, you are presented with two bits of data. 
The first is there is a readout of the sort of energy stores of the station. And you're able to tell that there is not enough power on the station to uh, fix its orbit. So it definitely needs outside assistance. Um, the other one that you notice is that taking up most of the screen is a video uh, feed of what it could be a series of cryogenic tubes that are in operation. But you're not sure if this is on the station or somewhere else. And these look like they are in operation. Yes. All frosted over and all that good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. We're not alone. What did you find? Cryo tubes in operation. Maybe here, maybe not. But there's a video feed coming in. And it appears to be a live feed. Yes. And you only have a live feed on something you want to keep tabs on that's important hmm. or dangerous. Very well. Dominus to Hyev. Yes, Captain. We're going to try and establish a connection to the Dark Royal with the station. There seems to be a live transmission of some active cryopods. We want to try and find them, and I want you to trace this signal. Of course, Captain. You know, give a nod to Zazadar to try and make an uplink. Nod back. And no. push the button or it happens. Yeah, you push the button, basically. And uh, he have, is silent for maybe a minute or two and says, Captain, I am detecting that the signal is actually coming from the third deck of your station. Just gonna look at Koros. How come we didn't detect this earlier? Uh, there's a third deck. <laughs> I apologize, sir. I don't know Very if that well. came through. Yeah, I apologize, sir. Very well. Zazadar, Koros, I want you to head to the engineering part of the ship. Me and Kragath will go take a look at these pods. So as it so happens, those are actually the same destination. Ah, perfect. But yeah, uh, what uh, what means uh, what this means is you are headed to the third deck now. Uh, in but, order to, oops, sorry. I'm um, just real quick before we leave. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to maneuver those cameras to get a better look of that area like move them left right pan up and down yeah i would say you'd be able to look left and right and it's actually maybe a good thing that you caught me before i went into a long-winded explanation um so what happens as you uh sort of look the cameras around as it were um i'm gonna put you guys on this map because i think it works for visually but for those who aren't looking at a screen uh what you're seeing is that the floor is littered in skeletons. Uh, six of them appear to be Zindi avians, and about a dozen other skeletons are these uh, foot-long carapaces with skeletal protrusions that jut out from beneath of them. You don't really know what the big carapace things are, but you also can tell that... Uh, they don't seem to have uh, died of natural causes. Or at least, uh, let me phrase that differently. They aren't showing like broken bones or arms or scorch marks or anything like that. Okay. Greg, I think we'll be taking the lead. I immediately ready my gun. And proceed. Okay. So one thing I would say is that as you are proceeding to the third deck, um, the only way to get to the third deck is by going through a crawl tube, much like a Jeffrey's tube. And what you're noticing is that as you proceed through the Jeffrey's tube, 
it's not really built to Zindi standards, like Zindi architecture as evidenced by the first deck, very large, very open. Um, and the Jeffrey's tube is anything but it's maybe about two meters. So you're definitely having to like bend over and contort yourself. Um, but as soon as you get to the third deck, you do open up to a scene that you see sort of right now, uh, where you have to climb down via handholds and there's just skeletons, debris, uh, all sorts of, uh, refuse as it were. And what you're seeing is there sort of along the far wall are a line of cryotubes frosted over, um, maybe about 20 or so cryotubes. And each one has a different marking on it. Captain, it seems we have found the life forms. Do you have any understanding of the symbols given? No. Let's have the Universal Translate take a look at it. And he's just going to look to Karth. Karth, Karth. Ah, I can't speak now. <laughs> I will send a message to Karth now. Cross is literally right behind you. <laughs> You're right, gonna send a message to me. <laughs> my my brain farted for a second. It She's just waving. <laughs> well, what does the what do these say? Uh, she like gonna look at it. Uh, can she scan it and see if? Uh, yeah. What's uh? What's? Let me ask you this: Would you be scanning the symbol or scanning what's in the tubes? I guess the symbols. Okay. In this case. That's going to be an insight science, a difficulty of two. And I would say your anthropology focus would apply. You have momentum too. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't need it. <laughs> so what you're seeing is that apparently maybe about uh, 15 of these cryopods are names that they there's names engraved in them like uh say senior researcher so and so or head engineer xyz um apparently these were uh conceivably members that ran the space station that you're now currently on but you do eventually come to the end of the line and in the last several um, you see what is a symbol that represents some form of an egg, uh, maybe an embryo. You're not really sure. It, it could mean many things. Uh, it turns uh, out these are... Go for it. Uh, I was just going to say, while she's doing the translating process... Mm -hmm. uh, Craig is going to walk over and like wipe the top of the tube to see if he can get rid of some of the uh, encrusted over ice and such to see inside. And as you do so, I'm spending two threat. Something grabs your ankle, Kragath. Uh I'm immediately going to kick upwards. Okay. <laughs> so you kick upwards and a skeleton flies up into the air, then clatters back down to the earth. Or not the earth, to the station floor. And uh, I'm going to also spend one threat to make you let out a girly scream as this happens. <laughs> Shit falls in. <laughs> <laughs> Dominus is just going to look at Craig. It's like, are you okay? Somewhat, yes. I do mm. request you erase that from your memory, though. Uh, changing doesn't forget. It just looks like when you got close, maybe the vibrations of your weight shifted it. Or it's haunted. Or it's haunted, yes. You'll just look to Zazadar and cars are like, okay. I guess I, I owe Gulaf some head. money. I do the... What's our gun type again? Uh, you have disruptors. I, I do the uh, cocking gun version... Well, the Disruptor's version of cocking a gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then go and try to wipe the thing again to see what I can see. All right. Well, it's probably a good thing the jump scare got you once because the second time it's not as alarming. Uh, there is another skeleton inside. 
Uh, most of these pods are not operational and probably haven't been for a very long time. Greg, it's so I guess that... Go Sorry, I was, she was trying to say, so I guess that explains why I wasn't able to get these live signs. Mm. Very well then. None of these pods are holding anything significant. Bones, yeah. bones, and more bones. Uh, just bodies of uh, senior officers of the space station. I mean, we can open up these tubes to see if they have anything of essential need, but... I have a question. Why would they put their commanding officers through tubes that are so against their biology, from what I know? Maybe the uh, incidents down here... Uh... Yeah, maybe what happened here affected their pods. Nothing here to salvage? Before we go too far, Kragath, why don't you roll me a reason security, please? Difficulty of one. And uh, what focuses will apply? Do you have survival or yes. investigation or many things could apply here? Uh, I'm not going to spend momentum on this. Okay. Dude. Yeah, one, one success, which is all you need. So remember how I said that there were no fractures or scorch marks on the bodies? That much mm -hmm. still is true. But what you're really able to determine with this role is that these beings didn't die of fighting. So it wasn't like an alien scenario where the smaller foot carapace creatures burst out of like a Zindi chest or something. Um, they all seem to have expired for different reasons. Um, what's your medicine score out of curiosity? My medicine score is actually, I believe, a four. Oh, well, in that case, uh, you're able to tell that um, the bodies all died of asphyxiation, as in life support was cut off. From what I can see, Captain, they died of, asphy of asphyxiation. Interesting. Whatever well, killed them was not viral and not external. Aside from life support. Yes. And so, Dominus is just going to check all the pods, just making sure, you know, like, there are skeletons inside there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's all they are because everyone's dead. I would say that as you go down the line and get to the end, uh, remember those pods I said were marked with like the egg or the embryo symbol? Mm -hmm. Those appear to be active, and inside is different forms of like uh pouches, like uh, imagine a bioneural gel pack, but very small, like maybe a, a bioneural gel pack that's about the size of uh, like a uh, a red solo cup. Okay. And he's just going to look at them for a second and back to Koros. What are these? Uh, she'll walk over and look in. Uh, I believe those are... Which you know exactly what those are. <laughs> I mean, they're embryos. Conceivably, yeah. you could, uh, using your technology, bring them to term, quote-unquote, um, these are basically the building blocks of a society. Like, you could raise a civilization from these. Yeah. Um, they're embryos, sir. Uh, we could take them back to the ship. And um, I, I guess the easiest way to say is uh, grow them. Not like crop, but like um, grow them, teach them, and potentially learn about them but they won't know about their species except for the things we know can you tell what species they are i can i scan it to scan them to see if they are the zindi avian species you can indeed that would be an insight medicine at a difficulty of two Remember, you do have momentum. 
Yeah, action. that takes better momentum. All right. Uh, sensors or xenobiology work? Xenobiology will most definitely apply here. Oh, she has... Um, isn't there something that she gets to freeze in a tricorder? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if I need it. But yeah. I was gonna say I don't. I don't think she needs it because yeah, that gets you two momentum. Yeah, and uh, what you notice is two things, uh, Karas. The first is that the embryos are both Zindi avian, and then another set is of a third or, or of a second species. And it's very easy for you to connect the dots that the carapace creatures. Uh, are the other embryo type. Oh. Um, the second bit of information you learn is that the carapace creatures, um, they resemble sort of centipedes uh, in the uh, way that they're designed. And these centipede-like creatures, they died because of a pathogen, a virus. But it wasn't a threat to you all. Like, if you were to take off your helmets right now, if life support was functioning, there wouldn't be a risk of contamination. Um, so we do have two momentum floating. No, no, sorry, we don't. No, we do? No, no, we don't. It brought us up to full. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Uh, I do want to ask a question, if possible. If Cross has a free one. Oh, um, would there be a complication of transporting the whole unit back to the Dark Royal if we connected it to its own power supply? Um, I would say that there would be a role involved, but I also would remind you that if you simply brought the beacon that would draw the nanites, um, it is conceivable that the nanites could simply repair in place. Okay. Uh, do we have the beacon? I would say you do, yeah. Right. Let's get to engineering, assess the damage there, and then we'll plant the beacon. All right. One other thing as well, sir, I was just thinking about. Mm -hmm. That video footage, we might be able to look at it in the past to see if there's enough storage that's why to see what actually happened here. That's why I want to go to engineer and restore what little power we can and access our computer systems. Hi. All right. So you still proceed through the same space. Uh, basically, you take a 90-degree turn and walk towards the left or the right wall because uh, it all loops around. It's, a, it's like a torus. And uh, what you find is that behind a sealed door, but you're able to get it open pretty easily, is a basic fusion reactor. Uh, something along the lines of like an NX level reactor. So very crude, but effective at what it does. Okay. I'll just hand motion Zazadar to go take a look at it. All right, so Zazadar, I need you to roll me a insight and engineering, please. A uh, difficulty of what? Let's make it a two. Right. And I'll use one momentum. And power distribution, diagnostics. Uh, I would say repair. diagnostics would definitely apply here. Ooh, interesting. Uh, I'm going to take threat for that complication. Um, with my cautious engineering, I can ah, re-roll yeah, a single re d20. That was inside engineering. Hey, look at that. Went from a uh, 20 to a uh, crit. Very nice. So, uh, what you learn, Zazadar, is that the fusion reactor, uh, it literally has just run out of fuel. Uh, all you really need to do is just add more fuel to the fire, and it'll start right back up. All right. All we need is more fuel, sir. Can we, well, do we 
take what's out of the power generator? Uh, you would have to bring over uh, what is essentially like a fusion pellet from the Dark Royals reactor, but it's a simple procedure. All right. Um, now, I think there was a difficulty two task. Mm -hmm. So we brought us up to full and it gives us one floating. Can we use that one floating just to say we brought a, a pellet or something with us? Sure. Just do it that way. And, just so uh, happened, I have one here for me, for us. Thomas just looks at you for a second, like, uh, "Do you snack on those or something?" You never know when it comes in handy. Right. Well, proceed. All right. So, Zazdar, you open the uh, fuel receptacle, toss in the pellet, push a few buttons. And uh, sort of stealing from the expanse here. But uh, the pellet begins to spark and illuminate. And a miniature sun uh, begins to form inside the, the fusion reactor. And immediately the station starts to come back to life. Uh, lights pop on. Gravity comes back. The air cyclers begin to function. And within maybe about 15 minutes... Uh, there's a Class M atmosphere uh, that you could conceivably exist in if you needed to. Oh, I love this part. Domus is going to look around and like, don't remove your helmet. If that pathogen is still around, we could become carriers for it. Especially if we're going to be bringing those embryos back to us. Now let's go look at the computer systems. Access some logs and see what happened. All right. So uh, I have the logs here ready to go, and I'm curious whether you all would prefer me to read them out or if uh, I would have you guys read them on your own because they're very extensive logs. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven log entries, and they take up most of a page. Ooh. Who wants to read aloud besides the GM? And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll make it a roll 20 handout. And we can explore these together. What's that? That sounds like Cars wants to volunteer. Oh, thank you, Cars. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, dear. Basically, we'll take turns so that it's not just me droning on and on and on. Popcorn reading? Yay! <laughs> oh, God, popcorn reading. That's... <laughs> That's that's an old thing. I, I feel old. <laughs> All right, let me uh, take a screenshot of this here. I'm just having flashbacks of when, uh, you know, elementary and the teacher is like, okay, you read a paragraph and you read a paragraph and you read a paragraph and you're trying to find out where you're going to be in the line. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. I tell you what, uh, why don't we actually take a break? That'll give me time to set up the handout and it'll also let people use the restroom. So let's be back in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Excellent.
And welcome back. So, uh, over the break, uh, I've given my players access to the logs that they have recovered. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to trade off. Uh, one of us, uh, five, will read off an entry. And then uh, we'll just switch to someone else. Um, I'll take the first one. And then you guys can decide amongst yourselves who goes from there. So, the first one uh, is a Avian Zindi. And the log says, We came from outside. This planet seemed a perfect place to hide, to grow, to evolve, away from all the others who sought to conquer us, to destroy us. We built our homes here, advanced our arts and sciences. We have become a peaceful, loving species, and quickly discovered that we are not alone here on this planet. Beneath us on the southern continent, another civilization already thrives. First contact was... awkward. We saw them as sustenance until we determined that they were sentient. We vowed to remain in the north so as not to terrify or anger them. <clears throat> the boroughs approach an age of industrialization. They already populate most of, of Subterra in the southern continent. 
and may be making their way towards us. Leadership has chosen to go with to go to them, to teach them by example, help them to build and evolve as we had, in a way that preserves this preserves the planet's natural resources. We are hopeful. I nominate chorus. <laughs> <laughs> The borrowers are severely fragmented and unprepared for what we have to offer them. News comes to us that a plague now sweeps their society through their society. A virus linked to our own genetic makeup. It makes them mad, affecting their brains in such a way as to slowly eat away at their cognitive functions while simultaneously triggering massive hormone dumps into the lateral septum area of their brains. This region controls anger and impulse control. Our scientists are already working on a cure, but they're dying quickly. There is little time. The borough wars on themselves while our scientists attempt to find a cure. We believe they have already slaughtered millions of their own. Our scientists believe we are close to a cure that will cancel out the genetic mutation in the virus, rendering it a predator with no fangs. I fear we are too late. There are rumblings beneath us. They have crossed the sea underneath it, and even now climbed to the surface of our continent. Have they come for us now? The cure has been... Oh. Oh. Go I ahead. Good. No, no, you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the cure has been provided to the burger's scientists. They have managed to disseminate it. However, something has gone wrong. It has failed completely and utterly. Not only that, but my own people become sickened with a virus similar to what struck the Dardan. We die within days of exposure. We are unclear as to how this is possible. Volcanic activity has increased a hundredfold in smoke blankets the northern hemisphere. Through it all, the burrows continue to hate us and attack us at every opportunity. Many of our cities have toppled to the ground due to explosive devices planted on our perches and in our homes. Soon, there will be too few of us left to do anything but hide. They follow us, hunt us, they blame us for the end of their society. How could this be? We were correct in our calculations. The cure should have worked. It hasn't, and once again, we find ourselves on the edge of extinction. All right, I'll take the last two. There are so few of us left, less than two dozen, in fact, out of the few thousand that first arrived and thrived on this perfect world. We have been approached by burrowers who say they are unaffected by the virus and wish to help us end the carnage that destroys two civilizations. A small group comprised of both our species have chosen to band together to find a way to save what is left. We shall once again leave the confines of a planet and travel into the unknown. We shall send a call for help and hope someone comes in time. And at this point, um, the log actually becomes a pure image of a Zindi avian. And uh, the voice says, My name is Governor Severa. My people fled a civil war that almost ended our existence, only to find ourselves living yet another disaster, one of our own creation, perhaps. In our efforts to protect ourselves and hide from the brethren who wish to destroy us, we have isolated ourselves into extinction. We can only hope a friendly, spacefaring species might arrive to save us from ourselves. I am one of the final members of my kind alive. We have no way to sending help to our station in space, but we have one last hope. Perhaps sending the seeds of our future elsewhere may allow us a third chance to get this right. May the stars always guide us and protect us. And that is where the logs come to an end. Dollars is so captain. Hmm? Yes. It seems we should not bring those two species close to each other. Well, apparently they're working on a cure. Maybe we can finish it properly or correct the fault in it. Is there any information in the computers about the disease and the cure they're working on? He's going to look at Chorus. We can go ahead and look through the systems as much as we can. Make it so. Across, uh, why don't you give me a 
insight and medicine, uh, difficulty of four. How much momentum do we have left? <laughs> You're capped at the moment. Yeah, we have six. Okay. Uh, should we add two dice to it or one dice? Uh, I'd say do two dice. Two dice. And your xenobiology focus would most definitely apply here. Awesome. Thank you. Well, very nice. That is uh, five successes. So you get a momentum right back. Karas, you're looking at the logs. You're looking at what data there is about the cure and the, the planet. <clears throat> and what occurs to you is that the, the logs were right. The cure should have worked. However, the longer you stare at the logs and then you look at your readings of the planet, you sort of start to make a connection that the volcanic activity coincided with the cure not working. So there might be something there. Is there possibly anything in the ash that's affecting or like reacting with the actually because you sent out 10 probes earlier in the adventure <laughs> uh you actually have data on that and that is a question i can answer so yes uh the ash the volcanic ash of the planet is carrying a airborne mutated version of the disease um it's better momentum to ask a question Mm-hmm. Is there any risk of allowing these eggs to hatch and be born? Of Is there a risk of them be having this disease? The answer is no, unless you tried to hatch them on the planet. Okay. Captain, one entry in the log has me curious. They said in the final entry, the governor Severa said that we have no way of sending help to our station in space. So these embryos were on the station already. If they came from the planet, how did they come from the planet if they couldn't send anything to the station in space? I'm assuming from the fact that they had explosives destroying their cities and that it probably took out their spaceport at some point. Judging from the technology level, they would probably have to launch from a decent area on the planet to help with the uh, escape velocity of their shuttle. Mm. That's just an assumption, but if they only had one spaceport on a planet and they couldn't launch any further, it would explain why that message ends like that. Is this governor one of the Zindi cryo chambers? Yeah, the, the answer name is no. There, uh, yeah. there is no planetary governor among the pods. Okay. And has the ten probes returned any life signs at all? Uh, they have returned that there is no higher life on the planet. Okay. Well. If we... We can leave... We can save this station and leave it as a monument and a testament to the cultures of this planet, or we can simply take those eggs and take them to the dark royal if we attempt to hatch them here they're going to be exposed because the virus is already airborne inside here it's just going to get filtered through back into the air over and over again if we take them with us well the risk should be zero and we would have a bunch of little flappy avians and bugs on our ship they didn't expect to become a nursery but I think it is the right thing to do. 
We could take care of them until we could, um, I guess, give them to Starfleet. Or we could return them to the Zindi. That is true. <laughs> Out of character, is Zek Lin still in engineering on the Dark Royal? Yep. Uh, it should be, yeah. So we have a Zindi in the engineering crew, Captain. Yes, a reptilian Zek Lin. Fire. Uh a reptilian, if I remember correctly. Aye. Uh, Maybe they can be of help. Hopefully. I know that most of the Zindi do regret what they did to Earth, and that's why they're um, such proud members now. Very well. Do we leave the station to go down to the planet and join the rest of their species? And we take those embryos back with us? Or do we try and save this thing and leave it floating for how many ever more years? I do not see tactical value in salvaging this ship. Captain. I'm spending two threat. Kragith, something clatters to the ground behind you. I spend another threat. You squeal like a little girl. Uh, can, can I roll to resist? <laughs> you you certainly may to resist. This is going to be a uh, presence and a security difficulty of two. I think if you have 10 threat, you should be able to dump that and make him pass out. Make him nah, faint. I'm not that mean. <laughs> okay, you do not scream like a little girl. You, you see the muscles of my neck tense up for a second, then go back down. <laughs> You know, the more I think about it, the more I think this is just a giant coffin. And we should allow it to be cremated, as it were. With fire? Orbital fire. We could set the warp the core to overload. The would the ship, ship itself would will... this not uh, burn up on re entry? It will. Uh, but some pieces would still be large enough to land intact. Well, let the wreckage of the hull be a monument to them then, or a gravestone. Let's pull everything from these computers so we have all the information from it, and we will then gather those embryos. They will have to go to. They will have to go through decon just to, like the rest of us, just to make sure we're not carrying anything. And we are keeping them in cryo suspension. Yes, if we have the method to bring them out of it, then we will do so aboard the Dark Royal. It's good that we didn't take the energy out of the power generator, and we can hook it up to this cryo chamber and keep it going. Agreed. Any other questions or objections to this plan? No, sir. Uh, I'm actually going to take a look at the at this thing that clattered behind me. What was it a skeleton? Uh, no, it was not a skeleton. It was just simply a deck plating that had been hanging loose, and uh, with the return of gravity, just sort of clattered to the ground. Okay. Okay. Well, if you want, I could spend threat and make an actual ghost. <laughs> All right. Well, you have your orders. Carry out your orders now. All right. So this is going to be uh, a timed extended task to get the embryos back aboard your station. Uh, before the station sort of loses orbit. So the work track is going to be a 12, and I'm typing this all out, so don't worry about needing to write it down. Uh, the magnitude is going to be a 4. The, let's call it a default difficulty of a 4. And I'm going to say you have, let's say, 6 intervals to complete this and uh, sort of as a reminder 
Um, every single attempt at an extended task takes two intervals unless you spend one momentum before the roll to tell me that you're having it to one interval. So, for example, uh, you could spend one momentum and do this first roll, and it would only take up one interval of time. So about an hour kind of a thing. Otherwise, it takes two hours. Um, the default task for this is going to be a control and in engineering, and one other person can assist with a control and a science. Uh, this is for the computer or for the uh, embryos? Uh, this is for the cryogenic pods and the embryos getting them back to the Dark Royal. Okay. All right. uh, would emergency repair be a focus? I'd let it happen, yeah. Okay. The assist is only one dice, right? Correct. And does you know biology work? It would, yeah. Okay. And we said control engineering? Yep. And it's a difficulty four. Yep. So I'd say mm -hmm. let's spend a momentum to have the interval. Oh, yes, because that also gives me cautious engineering. Oh, to have it? Yeah, just to, just to half it. Well, I'm going to pull one to increase the roll. Okay. And I can't do anything, can I? Uh, if you tell me how you're doing it, I might allow a second assist. Um, I can reroll those two zeros because of cautious and no, just one. A just single one, D20. but it wouldn't be enough to succeed, unfortunately. No. Nope. Uh, so what happens is uh, Cross and Zazadar. Oh wait, you have determination. Determination. Every problem with solution. I'll go ahead and pop it. Okay, so I need to see at least a crit on one of these rerolls. Okay. And you get exactly go. what you need. That is clutch. <laughs> All right. I'm going to roll for veteran real quick. Yep. My guess is you'll get it back. Now you're jinxing people. Nope. There we go. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sometimes I'm prophetic. <laughs> All right. So, Zazdar, you're rolling seven challenge dice for me. Oh, do you have Miracle Worker? Uh, yes, I do. Oh, gosh. Do you have In the Nick of Time? Yeah. Then I believe that is 7, 8, 9, 10 work done. So what I would say is if you give me a momentum and a threat, you will literally one-shot this extended task. Let's go and do it. All right. So... <laughs> Zazadar, you and Koros working together, you're a fine oiled team. Uh, you're able to dislodge the cryo chamber uh, containing the embryos from the station power supply. And with only like a microsecond of power loss, you hook it up to the portable generator. And you now are able to move the cryo chamber and transport it, etc, etc. And it only took you an hour. Well done, Starfleet. I do not want these things waking up. All, all credit should go to you. I only helped. That was it. Seems like it. <laughs> oh. like I rolled that zero. <laughs> you did all the work. Oh, nick of time. <laughs> Isn't it great? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I guess me and Kragath are doing the uh, uh, the data download, or at least, uh, well, wait, we're still connected to the ship. You are. So anyone on the ship could also assist with this. So yeah, we're doing the download of the whole entire computer core. Okay. That uh, is going to involve a, let's call it a control and, let's do a control and security. 
and the Dark Royal can assist you with a computer security. The difficulty on this, spending my last couple bits of threat to make it a difficulty of three. So I'll roll control security. Uh, how much momentum do we have? Just the one. Am I allowed to spend it? Yeah, go ahead. So we're at three and would shipboard tactical systems work here? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Actually, uh, what focuses would you say would work? Well, let's take a look at your focuses and see what you got. Uh, I would give you... Actually, I don't think any of your focuses would apply, unfortunately. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think any work here. I am very much the uh, language of meat style character. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think you have any focus here. Hey, but you get the three successes you need regardless. So nice. uh, you're able to do a full dump of the uh, station's computer core uh, right about the time that uh, Karas and uh, Zazadar report that they've got the cryotube ready to go. Very well. Have a transport to the decontamination chamber board of Dark Royal. Make sure it is done properly. And he's going to contact uh, Hev. Got one to Hev? Yes, Captain. We're sending a package. Might be dirty. Make sure it's nice and clean. Yes, Captain. We will have decon ready. Excellent. Thank you. Do you want us to go with the chamber, sir? Uh, yes. Kragath, join them. Yes, sir. And Dominus is just going to take a little walk around the station looking at all the different remains. And uh, he's just going to see if there's any quarters. Any quarters. Okay. Uh, I would say that there are, um, but they are more like nests. Like uh, sort of fluffy bits that have been brought aboard the station and arranged into a nest like a bird. Okay. And uh, do I come across any rooms that could have been for the uh, insectoids? Uh, actually, now that you know that the insectoids are sentient, um, remember how I said you had to go through the Jeffrey's tube-like aperture? Mm -hmm. uh, deck 2 is probably built specifically for the insects. Okay, I'm going to take a like my, use my tricorder just to like record the environment. Okay. Um, and the design of the uh, the nest and the uh, layout of deck two. Okay. And um, do I find any like belongings, anything of that? Yes, I would say in one of the nests you find what appears to be a golden widget. Now I call it a widget because you don't know the function of it, but it is a chunk of metal that appears to have some form of a gear and a dial on it. Okay. And that's the only thing I come across going over the decks. Mm-hmm. All right. With that in mind, and uh, probably the time getting closer to this thing hanging Atmo, uh, I will beam on over. All right. So uh, we are going to have a scene. I just have to figure out what room to have it in. Uh, let's call this. This is what we'll use for our quarantine bay. So you four are there. And by the time you get back, Captain, um, waiting for uh, sort of a report or at least a, uh, hey, what's going on, is a uh, certain Zindi Zeklin. And uh, Zeklin uh, kind of uh, taps on the uh, glass of the decon chamber and says, uh, do you have a moment? Go ahead. I understand that we've found Zindi avians. Not alive, unfortunately, but we do have embryos of them. That's a momentous find. Uh, Captain, I, I know I am a simple petty officer, but I would request that we return to Zindius immediately to return the embryos. Well, I was thinking of doing that. I was also thinking of hatching the embryos early. Sir? 
if we take this back to Zindi and they, are they carry anything, it might be a plague for your species. If it breaks out on a ship, then it breaks out on a ship, not a planet. Sensible precaution? I would simply raise an objection that I don't think a ship is, well, cramped as this one would be conducive to the Zindia avians. I'm sure we can give up a couple of quarters and let them fly around for a little bit. We don't mind double bunking, do you? Uh, no, sir. Very well. We want to make sure that they're going to be fine. Anything else? Unless you have an objection, sir, I was going to send a message to the Zindi homeworld. Feel free. Thank you, sir. And then he uh, walks off to go make a very important phone call. Of course. Yes, sir. I wanted to go through the data retrieved and see if there's anything on how to proceed with the incubation and hatching of both of these species. Absolutely. And once you find it, get the ship prepared for the necess necessary steps, and then begin. And I will give you some information on their nests and how they should be built. Yes, sir. Alrighty. Alright. And that actually brings us to the end of the adventure. So if anyone has any bits of uh, lingering RP they wish to have before we wrap things up, now is the time. Captain's dinner. All right. <laughs> so, well, because this is the quarters map, we'll just reuse this one. But let's say for, for sake of argument that you all go to Dominus's quarters. And uh, why don't you describe your own quarters for us there, Dominus? So the rest of the ship, uh, you know, it looks like how the maps look, but his quarters actually look like they're in pristine condition. Um, he has um, black drapes hanging around the walls just to cover up some of the uh, lighting effects. So it's a weird backlit red drape <laughs> that kind of bleeds onto the ceiling, which serves as the lighting. Um, he has a multitude of different figures and statues Um some weird designs you guys haven't even seen before. Um, and just interesting statues hung along the ceiling. Um, he has a large table uh, set up there so everyone can sit at for dinner. And uh, yeah, it's actually one of the more spacious uh, quarters on the ship, if not the most spacious. Come in. Finally got all of you here for a good dinner. Please have a seat. So, I have a selection here. Who likes toot grubs? I beg your pardon? Uh, Frungi delicacy. Toot grubs. Mm. No? Well, I also got gawk. H how spoiled is this meat? Or... Uh, the toot grubs are, well, they're dead. The gawk is very fresh. And, like, it's just a plate of worms still wiggling around. That's probably too fresh for me. Mm. I also have something called uh, Salisbury Steak. The nice security officer of Cerberus uh, gave me a couple of crates of this. And a design for a grill. And a few recipes for it. I have a request. If I could have a few samplings from that from one of those crates to set aside for a while. If you're going to start eating rotten meat just like that, I'm going to have a problem with you being on a bridge then. It doesn't have to be that rotten. Just just a little bit. Okay. I don't understand <laughs> the disgust, but okay. And Saz looks over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't have oral factories, but I do know that Hev has said on a few occasions that she could smell Grex's old stash, and he's been gone for a while. 
I believe I'm... our engineer has gone around finding the old stash and uh, consuming it. I am still it's... finding it. We also have, well, we also got eggs. We got a multitude of eggs. We got earth eggs. We got Vulcan eggs, Denoblin eggs, and Rigelian eggs. Oh, and a, and a salad for those who um, are weak. <laughs> Gawking eggs. All right, well, and he starts prepping everyone's dish for what they want. <laughs> So I, I just want to say that got in eggs needs to be assured. I, I'm just going to throw <laughs> that out there. <laughs> the worms get the birds in the end. Um, okay. So, this is a nice, relaxing space. When we're having dinner, all formalities and ranks are dropped. Unless you really piss me off. Feel free. Talk. <laughs> I'm just going to poke at my food a little bit. You're supposed to use a knife to cut that steak. I've been poking with a fork. But I'll roll with that. Mm. Sorry, I was getting back into the old habit of uh, consuming meat with bare hands. Hmm. Very well. Well, Chorus, we're going to start with you. Why Sorry. Starfleet? Why Starfleet, sir? Yeah. Well, uh, my parent grew up as the child of diplomats, and it, I didn't really, at first, I didn't really want to follow their footsteps, and I wanted to study science and the academy seemed the best way to do it, but uh, because of my family history, they kind of ushered me in the direction of di diplomacy anyway. But so your posting science. here wasn't by choice? Uh, I want to say initially it wasn't. Hmm. But I was the one at, at that. I was the one in the room with the most experience. And are your parents still living today? Um, my mother is. Did your father perish in battle or was it simply just age? <laughs> Not battle, sir. Just age. They were Some... very uh, combative people. <laughs> Some cultures look at dying in battle as a great honor. My view dying of age as an honor as well, if wisdom has been shared. You cannot learn from anything if all you do is run headfirst into a fight and expect to live. But if you know how to fight your enemies and you can share that knowledge with the younger, fighters, and he looks to Kragath, they have a better chance of living to an old age as well. Well, I hope to pass my knowledge on to those in the, in the future before I <laughs> eventually die, but hopefully that's not anytime soon. Oh, you plan on taking on a mate. In the future, I don't know how far into the future. And she's getting bright blue. <laughs> well, I, I do know Zazadar is... Uh, <laughs> he just starts laughing like, and I'm just having... Daz looks up, he's got this gack gawk hanging off of his mouth. <laughs> uh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and what about you, Zaz? Trying to eat <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Stop as long that. as I don't have food, or, as long as I have food in my mouth, they won't talk to me, right? <laughs> and what about you, Zaz? Zaz does a couple head snaps back to get the rest of the gawk down. But what, sir? I didn't join Starfleet. Well, why did you start your life in the the previous occupation you're in? 
to get away from the the, the, the parents. Really? They were that bad? No, it's the life. Staying on one one planet, one city, operating a small business. It was a life. And are your parents still around? That I do not know. I have not been back home. Oh. 15, 16 years. And you have not reached out to them. Uh, Gorn, we didn't really do that. Hmm. The, the children just went on their way as soon as they were old enough. I see. And what business did your family used to run? Or still runs if they're around? It was textiles. Skins, furs, and cloth. That's an interesting thought. An interesting image to see Gorn working as a tailor. Oh, they weren't tailors. They killed the animals for the skins and the furs. The cloth, they had other people do the weaving. Ah, I see. And you, Kragoth? Why did you you join the Imperium? I was given orders to join on this mission. I was born into the Imperium. I was raised by the Imperium, and I was taught by the Imperium. When given orders to join on a ship, I accepted without hesitation. And are your parents still alive? I do not know. Interesting. So you have no knowledge of your family's lineage, their battles won? All I know is that my sires died in combat. If I may interject, uh, Shizno, is it about that time for the surprise you had in store? Uh, yes. So Kuros and Zazadar, Dominus, you see this too. Forming behind Kragith is a cloud of nanites. And the cloud of nanites begins to form into the shape of a cornet. Uh, conceivably one that would give birth to Kragith. And uh, it just sort of looms ominously behind him. Course, I'm just gonna eat, <laughs> eat my food. I'm just gonna keep eating my food. <laughs> and Zaz is kind of looking sideways, always keeping an eye towards Kragith, slowly eating the gawk. It's behind, Missing you, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Captain, was this your work? Oh, I have many machinations and works. Take another bite of the meat. Just a look at the captain. Please do not attempt to play upon phobias I have. They're rather interesting. I never encountered a cornet that was, how shall I say it, in a kind way, hesitant about the supernatural. We all have our peculiarities. I guess that's true. Now, do you have any questions for me, since I've pried into your lives? I guess the food's that good. (laughs) Well, I guess since you asked us, Captain, what exactly brought you onto the Dark Royal? The Imperium, typically, from an outsider's point of view, are viewed as brutish, brash, and violent. We impose a very stereotypical intimidating factor about us 
in all honesty, we're, we use that as a joke. It is a nice ploy to have our enemies and even our friends always wonder if we are going to snap them in a moment. It helps during talks and diplomatic meetings. But the reason why I was picked for the Dark Royal, as far as my superiors have told me, is because I can see the bigger picture of things. Be it my experiences and how I was raised, or the fact that I'm a changeling. So that's why I was picked. I quite like this ship. <laughs> Being a changeling, has that affected others in your in the Cornet society of how they view you? Most of the time when they know, not really. They can just look at my service record and know that I'm loyal. The lot of the doubts were immediately blasted away when I destroyed that Dominion vessel. There was some concerns that I would leave and abandon my post during the beginning of the Dominion War. But I was found by a coronet officer. He took me in, not really noticing the extent of what I was. But I was able to shift myself to some degree, and I started to take on more and more of a cornet form as the older I got. He taught me about the society, about the ways and the traditions. I never encountered, as the Dominion called them, solids that would persecute me because of my changing abilities. He didn't see me as a tool. He didn't see me as a monster. He saw me as something that could help reshape the Cornets if given the chance. And the Cornets want to join the Federation. So, they decide to have someone with a more malleable mindset show the Federation that we are ready and we are willing to join. Granted, I still have to keep up appearances every now and then, blow up a few ships, just to make sure that everyone knows we're not going soft. To keep a Starfleet, try not to blow up everything so so much to, like, break the rules <laughs> and regulations. Please. Well, that's why I, I said a couple. The Zentkethi was a good example. We could have destroyed all three ships if I had wished it. It's just so much paperwork. Oh, that's that's what the incinerator is for. No. I sent back a log saying, I blew up a Zenkethi ship and told him to leave us alone. End of report. Do you incinerate the message? Or what, do you, what is the incinerator? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> this is just a joke. I hope so. No, I do not take action lightly. I do not destroy vessels on a whim. But if it is to send a message to a potential threat to the Imperium, I will make sure that message is loud and clear. A good example again to Zenkathy. Yes, but we do understand that if we do join, we'll have to change our ways. That is why I've been employing new tactics with this ship. Again, the Cornets have a reputation to be scary, intimidating, and hotheads. But we are quite different when you serve aboard our ship, which is as you have. Thank you. I, I believe those are all my questions. You <laughs> he looks as Azadar and Kragath. No questions, Captain. Not here either, sir. Just happy to be aboard. Well, eat up. I got plenty more to feed you all with. I did get something, though, from the bullion bartender 
He said it is a earth delicacy, and he's going to pull out a little tray from the side, and he's going to plop it down. They're called deviled eggs, and they all have little horns on them, made uh, made from candy, whatever oh, type no. of thing for it. You said they should be uh, introduced to the Coronet Imperium. Mm. She she's looking at it, trying to figure out exactly if if anybody would like them. I would definitely give them a taste, but they they aren't exactly something I would eat. Greg, just have one. I pick one up. I eat it. It's just, it's just a deviled egg. It's just a deviled egg. Yep. I, I kind of just look at my hand and say, it was an egg with spice. <laughs> and some... I guess mayonnaise. I'd like you to roll me a fitness and medicine, please. Difficulty of one. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the spice is kicking in. <laughs> And we have no momentum. <laughs> is there a Don't lot of worry. vinegar in it? Uh, I guess survival is... <laughs> I'll give it to you, sure. Okay, you're good. Yeah, the uh, the kick starts to get to you, but you keep it down. Craig, I think no wimp. <laughs> Today. Master at Arms, I do have a question for you. Yes. Make sure you bring your EVA suit by engineering so we can get a better look at it. There is something wrong with a voice emitter. It was making high-pitched squeals at times on our last away mission. Yes, yes, I noticed that as well. I was wondering where it was coming from. Thomas is just going to raise an eyebrow. He's like, hmm, yes. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Over the communication, I see. Yes, Captain. Uh, I'm. I make sure to jot down. Jot that down as a note. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I tell you what. Uh, that seems like a good point to uh, end today's session. So yeah, uh, thank you players for being here. Thank anyone on YouTube and Twitch for watching. This is where I'm going to cut the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, see you later.